Well, good morning, everyone. As we gather for Palm Sunday worship this day, um, in a very different way than we've, we've ever done before. And who said the church can't ever do something new? Brothers and sisters, welcome. Um, as we gather in this time, in this space, in this way, um, there is an announcement for our voting members that is on the screen right at this point in time. Um, because of all of the disruption, as you all very well know, um, is going on. Uh, the church council is calling a special congregational meeting that will obviously be online on the 14th at 7 p.m. More information will be coming out, uh, Zoom links and stuff like that. Uh, it is the deal, you know, is there's that stimulus package so that way we can make sure, especially our teachers, um, are still able to be paid in this time to keep them uh, supported. So uh, mark that time and more information will be coming out um, in the near future about that. Well, as always, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's the day the Lord has made, regardless of anything. This Palm Sunday is probably, uh, in this Holy Week, will probably be, uh, in many ways, almost more appropriate than any other one we might have participated in. But this is the day that the Lord has made. And so this is a time that we gather and worship. Uh, emails were sent out about uh, different ways in which you can help set up a uh, worshipful space to be able to be prepared, um, because you don't go to church. We really are the church. And so I said, you know, if you had a candle, I, you know, uh, Jenny's in my wedding candle uh, that we have here. So if you want to have, if you have a candle, you can light, make sure you have that nice and lit um, as a way, again, of saying, you know, we're in this space. And then is also if for those of you um, with the instructions that were sent out uh, for uh, communion, if you wish to, you know, participate in that communion service, uh, now you get to see me. Um, the, um, you know, make sure you have those elements handy at that time. Uh, so we're ready to just begin worship. Um, as we gather, let us gather in music uh, through uh, and listen to the song that Becky is going to play for us. <laughs> Whether or not uh, you picked up some of the poems that we put out, and we you know send out the emails and the Facebook comments about that we had. If you grab some green leafy plants in your house, or whether or not you're going to use the the two palms that God gave you at the end of your arms for Palm Sunday, 
Um, this is the time when we gather and we do the procession. And so, uh, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. A reading from the 21st chapter of Matthew. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them and you will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken to the prophet saying, tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, he, the whole city, was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen.
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior. Who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading this day from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, I know this is an odd time for many of us. I don't think anybody here has ever had anything quite like this happen in their lifetimes. It's something very different. And so we adjust. And as I said earlier, I think this week is an opportunity for us to celebrate Easter and Holy Week in a way that is maybe giving us a far greater understanding of what's going on than before. Now, I am sure that many of you have seen um, the, the, there's like a Facebook post going around of pastor's first Zoom worship. And you see this person sitting on a couch in a suit and a tie and a dress shirt. And he's got a pillow on his lap and his laptop open on his pillow so he can speak just like this. And underneath the pillow, you realize he's only wearing boxers. Well, brothers and sisters, I'm home and I'm seated. The laptop is not on my lap though. And just to dismiss any concerns, yes, I'm still wearing pants. I'm not wearing shoes though. And part of the reason I'm doing that is to keep myself grounded, to keep myself connected, to remind myself of the fact that I'm actually on sacred ground, holy ground. Like when Moses found the burning bush out in the desert, and God said, hey, this is holy. Take off your shoes. This is holy ground. Yes, I'm in my basement. <laughs> this is holy ground. This is sacred space. Yes, it is. That's what part of the message of Palm Sunday is. That's the part of the message of the good news of God in Jesus Christ. It is. Why? Because God says so, not because we say so. Yes, can there are ways in which we can set it aside, set apart, holy, to make something holy. That's what it means, to be set aside, to make special. Are there ways we can do that? Yes. And I invite you to think of ways to do that, not just this week, but every day. But to realize the fact that, yes, even into your home, here comes God in Jesus. You know, I've never been a big fan of the whole thing of Jesus knocking on the door. It makes us seem like, what, we, we can shut him out? You know, we, we have that much power, we can tell God no? You know, this, this story of Palm Sunday reminds us of the fact that God does come, comes into our midst in surprising ways, that he comes to us. Again, not because we're so wonderful and we're so worthy, but because we need it. That God comes to us to show us love and service and compassion and mercy and grace. That God comes into our midst 
because that's what God does. So yes, even your home could be a holy space, a sacred place. And we're, you know, it's something to remember that even though we're not in church, man, I, you know, the procession, you know, I love gathering that. I see a young lady in one of my screens that I asked to carry the processional cross for me not that long ago at an earlier Palm Sunday. And I got that picture. That's an awesome reminder of how we gathered and we'd hear the bells play and we'd, you know, and we'd sing, we, you know, we'd bless the palms and we'd process in singing all glory, laud and honor. We're going, well, what are we going to do now? Well, we're not going to church. We're having to stop and realize something far more important. We are the church. We, the people, wherever we are, are the church. We are the communion of saints, regardless of where we are. And that we have this good news, this message of God and Jesus Christ, of a God who comes to us, who comes into our midst and says, here you go. I'm here for you. Words that we hear in communion. And so we can remember that, yes, you know, and these are some of the hard learnings, maybe some of the good things that we can do during this week. Yes, even our homes could be holy places, sacred places, depending on how we do it, what we do but also the fact that we are the church, that we're called to follow, we're called to take up a cross, we're called to be gracious and merciful and loving and compassionate. And so that's something to think about that we're here. The other thing is to realize that, boy, things aren't going to be the same way. Things aren't supposed to be the same way. You know, I, you know this, the gospel lesson in Matthew, is, you know, is, is kind of interesting. It's the only one that clearly specifies that Jesus entered Jerusalem riding the back of two animals at the same time. How do you do that? How do you even think of doing that? Was he like a circus performer, you know? One foot on the back of each animal kind of waving as he's coming into Jerusalem? Hi, all, you know? That might be a silly image to think of God, but let's stop and think about it. God's going to come to us regardless. God's going to come to us in the silly and the funny. God's going to come to us in the serious and the sad. God's going to come to us in the brokenness. Why? Because God comes to us. He comes to wherever we are despite how we might respond. God comes to us despite any way in which we might receive him. That never, ever stops God from coming and giving, even unto death. Brothers and sisters, this Holy Week is a good week to remember that this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And maybe because you have a little bit more time, because of a whole bunch of things you can't do anymore and you shouldn't do anymore, maybe you can take some time to stop and think about what this week is about. You can participate in the worship services you know, on Thursday and Friday and Easter Sunday in new and different ways, yes. But also, you can take a look in the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus enters Jerusalem in, Mar in Matthew 21. The story of the crucifixion is in Matthew 27. Read a Gospel chapter each day. And on Sunday, read Matthew 28. And stop and think about all that Jesus did and all that Jesus is accomplishing and all that Jesus is telling us. To take that time to set it aside, to make it holy, to make it sacred, to share that good news with one another in your house and with your friends and family. Because yes, we're supposed to be physically dip, distant from each other, but there's no social distance here. Call your friends, text them, email them, video chat with them, whatever. Remind them that Christ is coming to us in new and different ways. That gift of love comes into us comes to us, comes for us. 
And so as we remember on this day of Palm Sunday, where we normally talk about this, I want to remind us of these palms and all the good things we can do with them. But one of the most important things we can do with these palms is keep washing them and keep, keep, keep them clean. But as we remember that we keep these clean for the love of ourselves, our families, and our neighbors, and that we stay physically distant from one another, that that promise of God to be with us never ends. That gift of baptism is ours. And so I invite you to remember the promises God made to you in baptism. If you repeat after me. I've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. I've been marked with the cross of Christ forever. I am Christ's. Brothers and sisters, that gift is ours, no matter what. We celebrate it on this Palm Sunday. We, ce we should celebrate it each and every day of a God who comes to us in love. And so, brothers and sisters, remember that God loves you, and so do I. Amen. Just feed us for our use, your folds prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have bought us the we are yours. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have bought us, we are yours. Yours in love, befriend us, be the guardian of our way. Keep your flock from sin, defend us, seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear us, children, when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear us children when we pray. You have promised to receive us, poor and sinful though we be. You have mercy to relieve us, grace to cleanse and power to free. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to you. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to you. Early let us seek your favor. Lord and only Savior, with your love our spirits fill. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have loved us, love us too. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have loved us, love us too. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have loved us, love us still.
as we come to the prayers of intercession, the, the prayers this day we're doing uh, interactively, a response, um, you have an opportunity just, you know, the, this will cover a wide range of prayers, but at the end, I will, you know, as we still receive prayer requests in the, through the church office through email and Facebook and, and texts and all that kind of fun stuff. And so we, and phone calls. So um, at, as we get towards the end, I will lift up all of those as well to honor all of those requests and all those times that we need to, and all those individuals and situations for which we pray. But in this time, let us prepare our hearts for prayer. Oh God, our help. You walk with us through all of life's changes. Grant us, Grant us strength, strength, patience, wisdom, and understanding. Oh God, our hope, you come to us in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. Show us your salvation and lead us in the way of the cross. Oh God, our shelter, you enfold us like a mother hen gathering her chicks. Watch over all who are sick grieving, lonely, and in need this day. O oh God, our home, you claim us as your beloved children. Lord, remember us when you come into your kingdom. For all of those needing health and healing, especially Anne, Connie, Russell, ML, Connie, GC, Frank, Irene, Phil, Ryan, Lynn, Jerry, Bob, Ann, Jasmine, Robin, Lauren, Maddox, Ross, Jim, Dave, Mary, Manny, Rachel, Susan, Stephanie, and Tim, and Mary, and Linda, and Gay, and Susan, and Bob, and Mary. And for all those dealing with cancer at this time, especially Carol, Don, JR, Michelle, Tony, Bill, Heidi, Carol, and Roy. For all of those who mourn, especially the family and friends of William Werner and Ryan. But in this time, we also pray for all those families who live in fear and mourn the loss of loved ones that they cannot be with and they cannot even have a funeral at this point in time. We pray for all of those who are sick. We pray for all of those on the front lines of this illness, all the people serving in the medical profession, their first responders. We pray for all of those who are afraid because they've lost a paycheck and now they're afraid of losing their home or their health care at this point in time. We pray for those who are in need in one way and or another that you may come to them. And we pray for our leaders, that they may know your justice, compassion, and mercy, and grace, and to proclaim that in word and deed to all they serve, so that all may respond, receive that which they need. A great deal has been entrusted to our leaders. May they execute their decisions with your wisdom brothers and sisters, everything else on our hearts and minds. For the church gathered in various ways and in all the different ways in which we can still help and still respond to those in need, we ask your blessings. All this we ask through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, this one, this <laughs> you want to talk about something your pastor dearly misses. Um, is the, you know, kind of the jump in the middle and handshake and hug and just see and touch. And we, we all know that's not what we need to be doing right now. But the message is important. We still need to find ways to share that. And brothers and sisters, this is a way of doing it. You know, Facebook, Twitter, text, text people and say, peace of the Lord be with you. Because let's face it, folks, if there's a message that needs to get out to people, here we go. And so I invite you to do that as you share it with one another in the space that you may be, but also in all of the spaces in which God is. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Now here's my chance to be a televangelist. 
um, without the hair, of course, um, and the and the slick multimedia campaign that takes all the money that they get and you know put it into the multimedia campaign and ask you for more money to put in their slick multi multimedia campaign. Hi, brothers and sisters. Yes, the church is still going on. And yes, we can still receive checks. There's lots of different giving options on the website that you could do electronically. Um, brothers and sisters, as always, the offering is not a bribe. It is not an obligation. The offering is an opportunity to remind ourselves of responding to that which we received first. And so if you can, please do. We, you know, we can definitely use the support. But also, you know, we do other things in the congregation with uh, Sunday dollars and noisy offering, which would have been last Sunday. Um, let me give you some options uh, in different ways of things of doing it. Uh, Navajo Evangelical Lutheran Mission in the Northeast part of the state serves probably one of the poorest counties and probably the highest per capita infection rates in the state of Arizona. And they're trying desperately to care for people, make sure there's food and people, you know, people are taken care of in there. You can help out Navajo Evangelical Lutheran Mission, um, help them out. Lutheran Social Services is looking for things, Inter interfaith community services. Some, you know, if you can make uh, some of the masks as people need them, especially, you know, for Lutheran Social Services and such, they have people who go in to take care of some of the most fragile people um, in our society and they need a mask. Um, so if you can make masks and you can do that, please, you know, take a look, Lutheran Social Services, Interfaith Community Services, Tihan, they're all looking for different things that you may be able to do. Um, there's lots of ways in which we can respond to God's love because we know God goes, comes to us, and God keeps going ahead of us. And so um, any way you can help out ourselves or, you know, the congregation, but also any of these places that are out there, um, I just want to put that out there as a, as a possibility. I invite you to join me in praying. Let us pray. Holy and generous host, you set a table where we feast as friends. Prepare us to witness to your goodness with every gift you have given us to share, that all people may know your peace through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Gathered around the throne of grace, let us proclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Now, I, you know, if you have your communion elements handy, you know, one of the things to think about is the fact that, you know, as the story is the story, you know, is going to tell us when we get to the Passover, I mean, when we get to the Passion reading, communion happened in a home. Um, and it happened as a group. And, you know, we're kind of a scattered group, but we're a group because we believe in the communion of saints. And so this is an opportunity to uh, bring some, you know, stuff to, you know, but to do so intentionally, again, this is, this is important. This, we call this Holy Communion for a reason. And so, um, you know, I put together something. Uh, the last couple of Sundays, I was, you know, broadcasting from the church. So I used the church, service, church um, communion wear. Well, I'm home. Um, now, uh, you probably have a wine glass that you can use uh, to hold the wine in. Um, you're, you're probably not a bunch of, you know, church geeks, you know, so you don't have, you know, your own communion set at home, um, you know, kind of things. Uh, but it's a pastor thing, you know, it kind of goes with the, um, the nativity scene there and there that you can't see and there, and you see those crosses and there's these cross. I, what can I say, folks? I'm a pastor. Um, but if you have a wine glass and a simple plate, um, you know, I'm, I have, you know, saltines can work, um, piece of bread. Jesus took what was 
common, what was there, what was handy, and re again reminded us of the sacredness of that is possible. That is, you know, that that God's presence is in everything. It's not just in little special places off to the side that God comes to us in our midst in all these places. And let's face it, often they're in dark rooms that we're scared, you know, living in fear of the germs. Well, we have this space that we can create, that we have to remind ourselves that Christ is truly present with right there, right here for us. And so, you know, I invite you to have, you know, those kinds of things off, you know, that you might have handy for you uh, if you wish to participate. But otherwise, this is a good opportunity just again for yourself, even as you just hear this, to remember the promise of God in our midst. And so, good and gracious God, we give you thanks. For on this day, your son, our Savior, rode into Jerusalem in triumph, fulfilling the promise of the prophets to give us and to show us where you would go to proclaim your love, to share your grace with all those that you would come into our space with your message of hope and salvation. And so we remember on the night in which our Savior was betrayed, he took bread, he blessed it and broke it, gave it for us to eat and said, take and eat all of you. This is my body. It's broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, take and drink. This cup contains the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And so may your Holy Spirit bless us with your presence. Remind us and feed us that you, your grace and salvation is ours, a gift from you. And may it strengthen us, restore us, lift us up into newness of life, proclaiming Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, dear Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, you bear the sin of all the world away. You suffered death our lives to save. Have mercy now, we pray. O Lamb of God, you bear the sin of all the world away. You set us free from guilt and grave. Have mercy now, we pray. O Lamb of God, you bear the sin of all the world away. Eternal peace with God you made. Give us your peace, we pray. At this time, brothers and sisters, you know, if you have the elements prepared and you wish to share it with one another, please take it. If you are um, you know, please give and take, you know, this is for you, body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. And for those of you who might be home alone and don't have that, know that we still, as a communion of saints, are still sharing this meal as one family of God bestowed to us by Jesus Christ. So the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. body of Christ broken for you, bud. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. We thank you, O living God, for the body and blood of your Son, which sustains us in the wilderness and the garden alike. As Christ has loved us in this feast, so send us to love Christ in our neighbors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear this dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul, to bear the dreadful curse for my soul. When I was sinking down, sinking down, sinking down when i was sinking down sinking down when i was sinking down beneath god's righteous frown christ laid aside his crown for my soul for my soul christ laid aside his crown for my soul to God and to the Lamb I will sing, I will sing. To God and to the Lamb I will sing. To God and to the Lamb who is the great I am. While millions join the theme I will sing. I will sing while millions join the theme I will sing. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing and joyful be. Through all eternity, I'll sing on, I'll sing on, and through eternity, I'll sing on. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul, to bear the dreadful curse for my soul. As we move into this season, this rest of Holy Week, again, an invitation to, you know, spend some time reading through Matthew. This is the gospel for this year, starting with the 21st chapter and going all the way to the 27th chapter by the end of the week and um, the 28th chapter. Read that on next Sunday. But it's an opportunity to see all that is gone and what is going on this busy week to again also realize just how much God is in our midst. And so hear now the story of the Passion according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where do you want us to make the, the preparations 
for you to eat the Passover. He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the 12, and while they were eating, he said, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say one after another, surely not I, Lord. He answered, the one who dipped his hand in the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one whom the Son of Man has betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who would betray him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a, a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, This is... <laughs> Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Truly, I tell you, I will never drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Jesus said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went to them, went them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to them, So you could not stay awake for even an hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for a second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived with him with a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up and said to Jesus, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you're here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and stuck, struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? But now then would the scriptures be fulfilled? which say it must happen in this way. At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come up with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me. 
But all this had taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following them at a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest, just to, and sat with the guards to see how things would go. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so they might put him to death. Now that they found none, though many false witnesses did come forward, at last two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You've now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. But when he went to the porch, another servant girl saw him and said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them. Your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I don't know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. And Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together with Jesus against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him, to, led him away, and took him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed. And he went and hung himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them back in the treasury since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury for foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken to the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price has been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price. And they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave them no answer. And even to a single charge so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to releasing a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who's called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, 
which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, why? What evil has he done? But they all shouted the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd saying, I am innocent of this man's blood, see to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, his blood be on, on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into, a governor, into the governor's headquarters and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him saying, hail king of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of his robe, put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene called Simon. They compelled this man to carry the cross. And when they came to a place called Gogotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when he had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right, one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, he saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Well, let him come down and from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lamach sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see if Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had followed him and provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea called Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus, and Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Jesus took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which had been hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. 
the next day, that is after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what the imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers. Go make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. I wrote this prayer for this time, and I invite you to pray. We seek to follow, we seek to hope. In this time, but every day, may we know you lead us into the future. You will bring restoration, healing, new life. You will make all things new. Sustain us by your grace as we follow in hope, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A reminder that this week continues on with a number of events. The story does not end. And so I invite you to, you know, to look at these, you know, and join us for these other services. There'll be other information that will come out and get it. So we can pray and we watch and we wait during this week. There's, you know, Monday, Thursdays at 630, Good Fridays at 630. Easter Sunday, we'll do two services at 8 and 10. More information and contact uh, is available, you know, will come out, but is also always available on the website. So we can celebrate this together. Brothers and sisters, worship has ended, but the church continues. For all of us, be careful, but go in peace. And as we head out, listen to this very appropriate music from Rebecca. Go in peace, everyone. God is with you.